Some of you may remember this motor that I built. We basically tore it all the way down, stripped it all the way down to the bottom, pulled out the rods, inspected the bearings. It's pretty much the same bottom end that I had in it before, which is Eagle rods, Wisco pistons. But this go around, we have JWT 500 camshafts, as well as some heavy duty springs from JWT, which should allow the heads to flow way more air than they are from the factory. Not to mention they are now ported by yours truly. But first, don't go anywhere, because I know you want to watch this. This isn't something you're gonna wanna miss. This is something I've been waiting on a long time for. So just a little background here. I bought these turbos roughly two years ago now. I knew what I wanted to do with the car and the future of the car. And I got a really good deal on the turbos. Shout out Dean Maslow. You guys have no idea how excited I am because I've been waiting so long for this. Like, like I said, I bought these turbos two years ago. So without further ado, let me show you the goods. We got V-band exhaust turbo manifolds. These things are nice. I mean, they're machine finished and they look fantastic. They're also ceramic coated. And from the looks of it, they may, I thought they would be cast, but if I'm not mistaken, this kind of looks like they were uh, 3D printed. They look phenomenal. Before these, I had the Ash Spec turbo manifolds. They were great. But the problem I had with them was that they were still a baby T25 flange. And the T25 flange is really a big hindrance to these motors, in my opinion. It's a bottleneck before the turbo. So with these, you have a full three inch V-band flange going directly into the turbo. The T25 flange is an old school flange with four bolts. It's a factory flange that came on these. And once you start trying to push seven, eight, 900 horsepower, you really run into a bottleneck with that and with these it, it's it puts you into a whole other bracket a whole other level just on the exhaust side alone now with the ash spec turbo manifolds they did not come with the hardware and if you look right here <laughs> shout out to polar engineering because he sent us the hardware that goes with the turbo manifolds now with the ash spec turbo manifolds i was also running gt 2871s with an 86 AR turbine housing. Now, typical Z32 turbine housing for those turbos is a 64 AR, 0.64 AR rather. Now, if you're not familiar with what AR size means, that is essentially the ratio from the inlet of the turbine flange to the outlet flange, something like that. I had a very large uh, turbine housing, which meant I had very sluggish spool up now with these turbos that i'm about to show you they're a 72 ar but with a three inch v-band flange it shouldn't be a hindrance also i have bigger cams now which should also help flow more air through the turbos and spool up quicker so this is gonna be just a rowdy setup all together i am i'm ecstatic for this i'm i i I can't stop talking about it, honestly. All right, so I'm done talking now. Let's just install these onto the motor. I do have the studs to take off of the motor, but once everything gets on there, you'll see it's gonna be nice and pretty and, oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait. This is the Pulsar Turbo G25 660 with three inch V-band inlet and three inch V-band outlet. I think that's three inch. Oh, that might be a two and a half inch. Paired with the G25 660 turbos, we've got two 45 millimeter turbo smart waste gates. I believe the spring pressure can go all the way up to 28 PSI or something. Either way, we really want a spring pressure of about 15 to 18 PSI. That way we can hit 30 PSI on these turbos, which should set me right around a thousand horsepower with the cam setup and head setup that I have in this motor right now. The manifolds Polar Engineering designed um, actually go along with these waste gates. Let's get started on this because it's been long overdue. So for starters, we gotta get the hardware put on. These are the old uh, 
exhaust manifold studs that I was using. Now there are a couple different ways you can remove studs. There's a special tool for stud removal. This is the kit I like to use. There are plenty out there, but basically all it does is as it screws, it tightens down around the stud and locks into place. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So if you look at the turbo manifolds, this back bolt has much less space than the other bolts. Um, obviously this is a standard size stud that comes with the set and you won't be able to fit a nut on there. Polar Engineering uh, was nice enough to include with us a shorter stud, which will go in this spot right here, which sits right up top here. And as you install these, what I like to do is install them with some thread locker, but I only install the thread locker going into the head. I don't install it on the nuts. And I'll be still fighting for you tomorrow. Yeah, even with a blindfold or in different time zones. Could find my way to you with my eyes closed. There's nothing between us. Go to Mars or Venus. Stand in front of every one of them rocks. They slinging and be a shield. You know what the best part about installing new engine parts is? Everything's clean already. I don't even need to wear gloves for this. It's so nice. Oh wait, probably wouldn't, would be best if I installed it the right way. You may be facing tribulation. Okay, really quickly, just to provide you guys with some pointers on installing these. Um, there are a couple nuts on these that may need to be installed. Nah, correction. They will need to be installed first. There is a certain order, um, especially, you know, to make it easier on yourself because if you don't do it like this, you could very well mess something up. So there's this nut up here, which has to be installed first with the, the uh, turbo manifold on both sides. On that side, this nut here needs to be installed at about the same time. But I would say install this one when you go to slide on the turbo manifolds. And then once you get the turbo manifolds on resting on the studs, this one here needs to go on second. And then this one here, at least on the other side, needs to go on third. Just a little word of advice. Um, since these are locking nuts, when you're clamping them down on the studs with the manifold, um, they get very tight and they can get very tight. And you really don't wanna risk having the nut round off on you from slipping with the wrench or something of that nature. So be sure that when you're tightening these nuts down, you are using a good quality wrench. So moving on, now we got the fun stuff. Got to mount the turbo onto the manifold and with the V-band. When you're getting the turbo ready to mount on, you will have to clock the compressor housing. Now how I clocked mine was I loosened up these bolts and they're actually still loose just a little bit. That way I can spin the turbo whichever way I need to, but I'm gonna wait to tighten them down once it's on the manifold itself. So before I mounted the turbos, if you remember, I said that I had loosened up all the compressor housing bolts on the back side of this housing. Uh, they are all one half inch, they are not metric. Keep that in mind, don't strip these out and don't over tighten them. If you over tighten them, you're gonna have big problems. But anyways, when I'm clocking it, I got the intake piping that I'm gonna use right here. And this is the piping I've had on the car. It's a two and a half inch ash spec kit. Since these are reverse rotation, they're gonna be a little bit different, but I think in general, the charge piping will fit in basically the same spot. So I'm just gonna reuse all this and we should be all set. You can see I've got my turbo oil feed straight up into the air. So it's gravity fed into the drain down here. I think this is good. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up right here. So first problem I'm running into here, and it's not the manifold's fault. I'm probably gonna have to shave down this side over here. I literally only need like another millimeter over here of clearance. 
to fit the V-band correctly over this because what's happening, the V-band is actually making contact with that nut and no matter which way I spin it, it's still going to make contact. If you look really closely, I had to grind down the back part of the V-band clamp, at least the outer edge of it. But uh, just a little piece of advice, it's, it's very tight right here against this nut and this part, as well as this part of the head and the V-band right here. Now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and actually get this turbo up on here. One of the primary reasons I wanted a V-band clamp turbo was so that I could remove the turbos in the car if I ever needed to. Um, this will make everything so much easier. This is game changing right here. It, it's just a shame that it's taken this long for the Z32 community to get this style of uh, turbo manifold. Okay, to go along with the Pulsar G25 turbos, we've got some Gen 5 Turbo Smart Hypergate 45 millimeter waist states. There are a couple different waist state springs to change your base pressure boost settings with. There's a yellow, brown, blue, and a green. Ultimately, I would like this motor to see about 30 pounds of boost. So with that, we will need at least a base pressure of half that. Unfortunately, there's no not a real combination to get to 15 PSI. So, but there is to get to 17 PSI, which I'm perfectly okay with. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do all that off camera because there's already plenty of videos out there showing how to do this that you can look up if you want. Also, one more thing to add. On these, you will notice there's a little like temperature looking thing right here. That's for the coolant passages for the Turbo Smart Waste Gate. Don't get that confused with the other passage, which is for the actual vacuum uh, line itself. As soon as I saw Polar Engineering release this setup with these manifolds, I absolutely couldn't say no. It was a no-brainer for me. And honestly, if he didn't come out with this setup, I was gonna find a way to do it myself. From here on, it's uh, it's go time, because we gotta get the engine in the car, and then we gotta get the transmission set up with the uh, new clutch that we got going into it. This, this whole setup is just gonna be like a dream setup of mine. Um, that I have envisioned for at least probably eight years, uh, 2017 I would say. What it all started from was uh, at FL2K actually, there was a GTR there with externally waste-gated V-band turbos. Um, as soon as I saw the GTR, I looked it up online and I saw photos of the engine, but seeing that made me realize that if they can do it in that car, there's no reason we shouldn't be able to do it in the 300ZX. And if this isn't like eye-opening for you guys who are interested in or even considering doing this, um, I 110% I suggest it because this turbo setup in particular should be well capable of a thousand horsepower because this here is just absolutely game-changing for this car and for the VG30 platform because now instead of having to pull the motor to get the turbos out, it's one bolt and the turbo drops out. Okay, maybe a few more than one, because you got the oil feed, the drain, the intake, the exhaust. Now, for those of you that are just now watching this and you're new to the channel, if you want, I have other videos of completely assembling this motor from the rod bearings up, um, all the way through porting the heads, we got cams installed on it, the whole nine yards. This is a fully built VG30. The only thing that's missing is billet main caps. I am still on the factory main girdle factory main cap with main bolts but in the meantime that's gonna do it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it we'll see you next time